When I'm talking to people about network visibility, one of the very first topics that comes up is how to get the traffic off of your production network and into the tool where you're going to be looking at the data. I'm Hans Hohenner. I'm a systems engineer at Keysight, and today we're going to talk about the two most common methods of doing this, which are spans and taps, and how both fit into a proper visibility architecture. Spans are a software configuration on your switch that allows you to take data out of one port and copy it out another port. They can be incredibly useful in labs and proofs of concepts. In your production network, however, they can have some headaches. First and foremost, they're prone to packet loss. In a broadcast storm or denial of service attack, the low priority process that governs the span port will fall to the bottom of the list and get dropped as your switch and routers try to keep the traffic flowing within your network. Secondly, operationally they can be a headache. They're one more risk point that can cause issues during change windows and other things that you just don't need when you're trying to manage against mean time to resolve or uptime within your network. Finally, they're not always available. In some legacy environments, especially like OT or operational technology, where you have unmanaged switch fabric, they're just not even available within your switches. Taps, on the other hand, got one right here, sit on the links between your various pieces of network equipment. This could be the firewalls, routers, load balancers, switches, whatever you've got going on in your environment. They're completely passive. They're layer one devices. There's no electricity or moving parts in a fiber tap and they solve some of the operational complexity that we were talking about earlier with span ports because of the lack of configuration needed. More importantly, because they are a layer one device and they just split the light, you get all the data all the time. There's no concerns around your network links being completely utilized and the priority dropping traffic. You're going to get the data when you need it. Finally, they allow you to establish a DMARC on your network that separates out your production and your monitoring traffic, which is just good sound network architecture. Only downside to taps is the cost to procure and install them in your network, but once you've got them in, you're good to go. Now let's go look at a network diagram and see how we can use both to come out up with a complete network visibility fabric. So now that we've covered spans and taps, let's talk about a sample network and where you might want to deploy different things. So on the screen, I'm showing an enterprise network that has common elements that we see in a lot of customer environments. So the first thing here, we have the ISP feeds coming in through their routers into a series of firewalls. And then off of that firewall hangs our DMZ network where they might have WAF servers, IPS, what have you, also might have some protected services out there. Secondly, they've got their core network, which we'll talk more about in here in a second. And third, They've got their VPN network for all their remote employees, which might be most of them in this COVID-19 world. Off the core network, we've got floors in the building, could be a distributed campus. Some of these might be in a different building. Some of these links might be single mode links from building to building, what have you. Uh, finally, we've got some VMware infrastructure for any local office needs, any virtualized um, environments you've got or services you've got within your network. Within this network, some of these floors where you've got small numbers of employees or you've got uh, low priority services running, you could definitely run span ports off of there and save yourselves a little bit of money. Um, off of the core network and especially things like your external network uh, and your VPN network, you'd be much better served using taps. Finally, this VMware infrastructure down here, we'll use virtual taps, which will be a topic we'll talk on the following video more about and show an example of. But suffice it to say, with virtual taps, you can follow VMs throughout your environment from hypervisor to hypervisor um, and get the full visibility of what's going on, and especially some of the east to west traffic within that environment. So again, taps up here in your external and your core networks, spans down here on your floors, and virtual taps in your VMware network. Once I show that deployed, you can see I've moved it over a little bit and you can see all these little symbols here. So this and this and so forth. All of these are taps where I've tapped out the external and the core network, but I've left span traffic on the floors. And so once I've got that deployed, I then pull it all back into a packet broker, which we'll also talk about on a following video, build a GRE tunnel in for my VMware, bring it all together here. Now I can take that data, I can aggregate it, dedupe it, 
and do advanced filtering on it and send all of that data out to my various tool farms. This could be operations tools, performance tools, security tools, forensics tools, what have you, that you need within your environment to keep you protected. So hopefully that answers some questions around spans, taps, and how they can be used within a corporate network. And if you've got more information, just reach out to us at the email address on the following screen, and we'll be happy to talk to you about how they can fit within your network and solve your business needs. Thank you.